Hello. Good to see you. I'm glad you didn't make it. <laughs> How long have you been? You're a cup of tea. <clears throat> well, as you can tell already, I'm joined by Jenny Macklin, uh, the Minister for Indigenous Affairs, and by Warren Snowden, uh, already in uh, discussion with the crowd, uh, who's here in his capacity as the Minister for Indigenous Health and also in his capacity as the member for Lingiari. A couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, I visited the Northern Territory and I was there with Jenny and with Warren to see what progress was being made on the ground as a result of our policies to close the gap and the Northern Territory emergency response. I got the opportunity to talk to a broad range of people, including particularly elders of Indigenous communities in the Northern Territory, as well as teachers and parents, community members, local business people, to get all of their feedback. And the feedback that I got during that visit was that progress has been made through the Northern Territory emergency response. We are seeing women and children feeling safer, having more money to spend on the basics of life, on food and clothing for kids. Uh, we're seeing kids being fed through schools, 7,000 meals a day being provided to children in schools. We're seeing programs uh, coming into effect to deal with alcohol and the pressures that that brings to Indigenous communities. We're making progress on housing. So a difference is being made and I saw that difference with my own eyes. But I also saw very clearly that a lot more needs to be done. We talk about closing the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. We talk about that right around Australia, but that gap is at its widest in the Northern Territory. The gap is at its biggest on life expectancy, on literacy and numeracy, on employment outcomes. So there is still more to do. Uh, the Northern Territory emergency response uh, is the subject of legislation. That legislation ends in August 2012 and the funding that came with the Northern Territory emergency response ends on the 30th of June next year. So today, with my colleagues, I'm releasing a discussion paper so that we can begin the process of consultation about what the next steps should look like. Uh, we want to make sure that we are consulting and working with Indigenous people to shape a stronger future for them. And the consultation paper that we are launching today, the discussion paper, is called Stronger Futures in the Northern Territory. Now, we want to have a genuine dialogue, but I do want to give the following commitments uh, as we have that dialogue. I want to make the following commitments about the next steps. First, the views of Aboriginal and non-Indigenous people will be at the centre of shaping what we do to deal with these levels of disadvantage, huge levels of disadvantage. We are committed to ensuring that all future initiatives comply with the Racial Discrimination Act. And the government will continue to support the Northern Territory Government to strengthen the capacity to meet the high levels of need for vital services. So they are three core commitments that we make as we go about this process of discussion and shaping the next steps. When you look at this document, you will see that there are three clear areas of focus. Kids being in school, dealing with alcohol and getting people a job. And we're focused on those three areas because they're pivotal to turning around the disadvantage that we see in Aboriginal communities in the Northern Territory. For kids to get a good education, they've simply got to go to school. For people to have a decent life chance, they've got to have the benefits and the dignity that comes with work. And everyone that I spoke to in the Northern Territory had a very strong focus on the damage done by alcohol and we need to curb the alcohol. So those three things are the subject of a very strong focus in this discussion paper. I'll call on Jenny Macklin now for some comments and we'll be happy to take your questions. Thanks very much, uh, Prime Minister. And uh, this is uh, a very important point 
for us. Uh, we do know that the situation in the Northern Territory for Aboriginal people, particularly those living in remote communities, continues to be critical. As the Prime Minister has indicated, uh, just a couple of weeks ago we were in uh, Alice Springs and then up in Gove, uh, but in Alice Springs particularly we heard from local Aboriginal leaders who made it absolutely plain to us that there is a lot more to be done, that the situation for uh, children, for women uh, and for families, particularly in uh, remote communities in the Northern Territory, still requires a significant commitment from the Commonwealth. Uh, if I can just share with you one uh, plea that was made to us by uh, Gina Smith from the Central Land Council, who really said uh, in the most uh, plain terms to the Prime Minister, Alcohol is killing our people. Alcohol is destroying our families. And she said to the Prime Minister, to Minister Snowden and myself, please help us to deal with what is destroying our families. We also have continued to get the very strong message from Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory that they want education to work for their children, that they understand just how important it is that their children get to school. And when they get to school, they get an education that means that their literacy and numeracy, their educational attainment is the same as any other child can hope for around this country. And of course, uh, we also get the message loud and clear wherever we go that people want to work. Uh, we got that so clearly when we were up in Gove uh, uh, witnessing the signing of the Gove Agreement. Uh, and I welcome Senator Crossan. <laughs> Thank you. Senator's uh, a busy place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the, when we were at Gove witnessing the uh, historic Gove Agreement, central to that Gove Agreement was employment getting uh, people the opportunity to get the training uh, that they need, getting uh, the opportunities that they need to get work so that they too can be proud providers for their families. This is what uh, we want to do with Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory. If there's one really clear message uh, we've got from all of these discussions, all of the work that we've been doing in the Northern Territory over the last uh, four years, it's that Aboriginal people want us to work with them, for us to listen to them, to work with them to deal with these problems that they know are real, that they know destroy their lives. And that's what this discussion paper is about today. It's about saying to Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory, <coughs> we want to discuss the next steps with you we know the situation is critical. We know that education and employment and alcohol abuse are, uh, are critical issues for you and your families. And we intend to, over the next uh, period to get out and discuss uh, these issues as widely as possible with uh, Aboriginal people on the ground in the Northern Territory.